Good morning. My name is Fox Sellers. Here's my channel. Thought maybe I'd share some more things with you. Uh, specifically today, I'd like to talk about comic books. I've been putting out some videos. Uh, there's been some interest in varied. Um, they all, they're all relative to things in my life, whether that be travel, my family, uh, art, fine art. Uh, you've seen a couple of museums that I've gone through. Films, uh, critiques of films, heroes, villains, music. Um, and then I did do a video on comic books. And that seemed to be the one that was probably the most popular. I mean, by a lot. So I did want to touch on those again. I uh, wanted to release a couple more videos that are relative to that. I have a specific hobby that I've been doing. And I've had the luxury where I've been doing this since I was nine years old. Off and on, but that's a very long time to have been collecting comics. You know, back in the early 80s, these were a lot cheaper back then. You could find a lot of these. And then over time, I've collected a lot of keys and then I've sold off, you know, here and there to pay for new ones that I wanted to get. Um, and honestly, I'm in this, you know, I, and, and I don't want to judge anybody else for the way they collect comics, but I just kind of wanted to maybe let you in a little bit on, on what I do. I really love the comic book as a medium. Um, it's really one of my, my favorites, uh, you know, and in comparably, if you want to talk about, you know, horror movies or, or, or art or, um, magazines, novels, movies, television shows, whatnot, it's, it's an underrated medium. And I really feel like talking about some of the, the specifics that are so great in this industry. Um, that being the, the characters, the arc of those characters, the storytelling, the art. There's so much fantastic art in comics. Uh, that's my favorite thing about comics. And I wanted to kind of talk about them. I wanted to talk about my approach. Um, I am buying comics for me to own and look at and read and have. The nostalgia of them is, is really one of the biggest aspects of this for me. I, uh, you know, I've rejected the CGC um, slabs for so long. And I'm going to touch on, the, on that a little bit more later. Um, but I, just to kind of show you my, my arc um, of this. But I really didn't want to have what would be considered like a stock or an annuity. All you can see is the cover. Now, if you slab a really great cover fantastic you, you know you can present that i don't like to present my comics or whatnot i like to just have them you know it's something i want to read i'm i'm looking for the keys within my book and the biggest part of my uh my hobby and and the exercise of going through this is i i want a deal i don't typically pay full price i'm looking for the deal so because there's so many that i love i will i have the opportunity to s wait on, on the ones that are like, so I can ignore the FOMO. I don't have to seek out the book because, oh, this one's going to go up and such and such is coming out or the, this big focus and this, this interest in a new character that people hadn't known, or there's, you know, a reemergence of a character. I can stay away from those books. And what I do is I'll go to auction sites. Um, there's, there's hip comics, there's heritage, of course. There's, um, I haven't done whatnot, but um, I'm curious to try it out. Um, I'll go to shows or I'll go to flea markets and, and all of those different venues. I'm looking for the book that's priced lower than its value. Um, I'm also focused on the ones that just aren't of interest at the time. So like during the big boom, 2000, 2021, everybody was focused on Marvel Comics. So it gave me a chance to really dig into the the DC comics that I loved. Um, like I was buying a lot of Batman. I was buying a lot of Superman, Superboy, Green Lantern, Flash at the time. And now that's kind of shift. There seems to be more of a focus on some of those DC characters. So I'll just, I'm laying off those for a bit and I'm dipping back into a lot of the Marvel characters that people have lost interest in. So I would like to share with you some of the riches that I've uh, invested in over the last year or so. Um, I keep what's called a, a grail list. And then I also keep a list of all of the books that I want at some point. And they don't necessarily need to be of high value. They just need to be ones of interest. 
I've got maybe like eight grails that I have on my list. And over the past year uh, or two years, I've acquired maybe two of those grails. I'll go into that one in a separate video, but I'd like to talk about the ones that I got uh, over the last couple of years. So early on, I was focused on the DC books and this was on, I believe it was on hip and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll point out that you, you never really regret the books you buy. You always regret the books you didn't buy. And on hip, they had this collection of, of Swamp Thing books uh, that I bid on all of them and I was bidding low. People weren't really necessarily buying Swamp Thing at the time. I got number two, I got number five, and I got number seven, which was seven was a was a great one that I was looking for because it was the first time that Swamp Thing and, and Batman got together and met. Re really well written book too, by the way. But when I got the book, and these are all Bernie Wrightson, by the way, too. Uh, when I got the book, all, all, all three of them, actually, the condition was mint. Th these were near mint. Uh, every single one of them. And I bid on Swamp Thing number one. And I regret not getting that one. Um, as I told you before, I'm always bidding like, you know, half of what they're worth. And I'll just see which ones I get. Like whichever, whichever ones I'm like, oh, I got this one. No one was bidding on it or, you know, no one bid high enough. The Swamp Thing, I think the book was worth maybe about 300 bucks, and I bid as high as maybe like 120 because I'm like, well, you know, if I don't, you know, if I have to pay full price, then you know, I'll just wait on that one. And that's one one I regret because the book didn't didn't sell for more than I think like 150 or 160 and that book was worth somewhere between three and five and 350 So I could have gotten it for a pretty good deal and that's now like you know one of the ones on my list so i regret it so another thing i got into during that time was uh superboy and for i never really had an interest in superboy as a kid um but i bought a couple of the books read them and i got in like this is interesting you know i i, I watched smallville um when i was a young adult and i always thought when, while watching that i was like this is interesting this is new i didn't I, I wondered why they never really touched on these types of stories of Superman because they 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 took Superman who was this kind of godlike character and they showed you the kind of the Marvel version of like this is the kid that goes through the problems just just like Spider Man and what I didn't realize was these stories all existed they were already there um, Superboy. You know, came decades after the Superman books, but they were really interesting. So I started buying up, you know, the first one I got was the 120. A lot of these I bought on hip, uh, hip comic uh, auctions. And they'll, they'll, they'll load up like, you know, one group that, that's selling them will load up, you know, 300 books. And you just go through them and you try to you bid on as many as you can. And I got a, I got a lot of really good ones. I was... I was focused on the ones that were um, uh, that had either like the Phantom Zone in it, or had uh, Mitzio Plick, or had um, Mitzio Plick was always one of my favorites because uh, I used to watch the Super Friends as a kid. So I picked up a lot of those. Anything that had a Neil Adams cover. Um, so I got Superboy. So I got Superboy 137, 160, 161, I'll point out. And these were these were really well-written books. Um, the art in it is great. Uh, Bob Brown, I think, did the art for most of these. But Franks Robbins touched on this, you know, Mayberry-type Middle America and very typical teenage problems that Clark was going through and I got I got so attached to some of these stories I really loved them um, I seeked out the ones I'm a big Neil Adams guy so I seeked out the ones that were uh, the great covers by him this one by the way uh, 164 is one of my favorite covers by him and I found ones that were really high condition I have very few that are below like a 7.0 um, 167 uh, 178, 
Um, and then I got into some of the adventure comics. Now, one of my grails that I've been seeking out is the um, the first appearance of General Zod. There's not a lot of big interest in that for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, but the, what is it? Uh, 283, Adventure Comics 283, I'd like to get my hands on. Um, and I bid on it at one point. There was one that was like a, a slabbed 6.0. Um, didn't get it. I, again, I was following my normal normal routine of only, you know, bidding what less than what it's worth. And if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. And I just pick up the books that I'm getting on deal. So, you know, sometimes I have a regret when that happens. Um, but, uh, hey, I'm not rich. So I'm not buying up all these books like crazy just because I want them. So I'm buying the ones that I can get at a deal. But I did start buying the adventure comics. Um, oh, do I have these in order? Let's see. I don't think I did. I bought... 351, 355. A lot of the ones that had the Neil Neil Adams covers, um, I got 359, 366, 367. Some of these, they were a little beat up. Um, I got some of these at shows. I got some of them on hip. Um, I might have bought one or two off of eBay. Oh, by the way, um, one trick I always like to do, and it depends on who you're dealing with, but if when you find something on eBay, and by the way, they charge the hell out of the, the dealer on eBay, so they will jack up their prices a little bit. And what I always found was was there's there's usually enough evidence to figure out who that person is um, or usually it's a it's a dealer or a comic book store and you can maybe find their site. So if you can find enough information about them in the listing, go ahead and try to find their site. And I did that with um, Reese's Comics, which is, was out of uh, uh, Texas. And I found a couple of books that I was really looking for. Um, one being the first appearance of Mordrew, who was a Superboy villain. I found his first appearance. And then I also found his second appearance. Uh, I don't think he's a character that that's well sought after or known very well, but uh, um, I, I just liked him. I, you know, when I think I read like one of the one of the Superboy books as a kid, and he was in it. And I was like, he's a cool character, and it just always stuck in my head. So um, I did uh, I did get those from Reese's comic site directly. And I'll I'll tell you this always, and, and it works works with Reese. Um, they're very flexible. Uh, always put out an offer. You, you don't necessarily need to buy books for exactly what they're asking for. Put an offer out there. And also do this too. If you're on eBay um, and you want to find like, you know, a guy that's selling a bunch or whatnot, click on their store on eBay and see if they've got other books that you like. You might find one that's like, you know, kind of a filler book that doesn't cost that much. You could throw it into a higher book that you're bidding on or asking for. And they'll they're they're more opt to go down on price if you're like hey i also saw that you have this book and this book and this book i'd like to buy all five of those what what do you say you know and if you just add up the price and you just say hey uh would you take 20 percent off 10 percent off usually works usually works so um i also got on hip i got a 371 and i got 373 and here's an interesting one i found this one on uh, eBay, it was one I was kind of looking for. It was it was one of the it, it, it's one they consider a key, and it's because Adventure Comics switched from being Superboy to Supergirl, and so they include it's a really great Neil Adams cover, uh, and they include both Superboy and Supergirl on the cover. And the book ranges anywhere from like a hundred to three hundred, and I found one in a really decent grade. I would I would grade this. Maybe an eight. I'd probably grade this an eight. I doubt I would get lucky enough to get an 8.5, but I would grade it an eight. Uh, and I found it probably at 60% of fair market value. So, you know, I made the guy an offer. Nobody cares about this book right now. So I was like, great. Uh, you know, I added it to my collection. I found, also found another one 
This one was was a cover that I just always loved. Let me fix these for now. This was a cover that I had always loved. Um, where all these alien villains are, are have they put her in a compromising position. It's just kind of a scary cover when you see somebody, especially a hero, where you're like, they're 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 screwed. What are they gonna do after this? I also got this is this was, I believe, the oldest book that I had owned. I bid on it. It was, you know, a Phantom Zone book that had it, it, this was the old, this is the oldest adventure comic book book I own. Um, and I believe it's the second appearance of General Zod. Uh, I got it on hip uh, quality comics. You'll see all these little stickers that are like this. Any one of those you see, that means I got it from quality comics. They're pretty good. I get a lot of books from them. Um, I think I got it at maybe like half price. You know, no one else was bidding on it. No one cared. So um, that's part of my strategy. Um, another one I got, I actually got this one on Heritage. I was, I was getting another book at the time during the same auction. And uh, Mitzio Plick. Oh, love those. This, this is now, I think at the time, this was the oldest book I had ever owned as far as, you know, how far back. I think this is 62, something like that. And then Superman 148. Uh, that's now, I think, I think this one's older than that one. Chime in in the notes if you don't know. Um, also got, I got this one from Reese, Reese's Comics, when I was buying a bunch of other books. I think I had bought a Conan at the time and I got this one. I threw that one in there. And here's another one. This was one of like, I don't want to call it my uh, one of my grails, but uh, I'll call it one that I sought after because I love, from the Flash comics, I love Gorilla Grodd. And this was a great appearance of him going up against uh, Superman. So I was like, I gotta have that now. This one, this next book is one of my grails. I looked for this for the longest time. I thought it was a, a really great cover. And it's a uh, Flash 172. Now, when I started looking for this book, I discovered that it's garbage everywhere you find it. I, you, you could look look for any copy you see on eBay, um, any of the auction sites. It's beaten to hell in every every listing that I found. So I couldn't find it in a good condition, and I, and I wanted it in a good condition. I finally this is this is the rare case where I might have paid I might have overpaid for it, but I found a guy that was listing this. Um, and it was impeccable. I really think that there's maybe like two color breaks on the edge. Uh, I looked through the book. It's in really great condition. I think that I could get, you know, over a nine on it um, if I submitted it. So I'm, I mean, I'm curious to see if that's the case. But this was this was one of my grails. And the reason being, it was just so hard to find this in a really high grade uh, you know, one, once I did find it, I, I, I swooped it up. I was like, I don't care if this costs more. I'm going to get it. And um, it's not it's not breaking the bank. Um, I think it was like less than 100 bucks, but maybe about 100 bucks. So um, one, of, one of my uh, one of my wins. Um, oh, I'll also, I'll also point out this. I wanted to talk real quickly about bagging. Um, most people are using the um, poly, polypropylene bags. I don't like them because they, they don't last long. They start to kind of crinkle. So I use the polyethylene bags. The only problem with the polyethylene is that they're, they're really hard to come by. You ha there's not, I actually, yeah, I couldn't find them on eBay. I couldn't find them on Amazon. So I found it, I found just a random guy that had it on his website uh, who sells, uh, they, they sell other uh, comic book supplies. And I just kind of bulked up on it. I bought three bags of hundreds um, and just stocked up on that for now. Now, the polypropylene really has no UV protection. These have a little bit, and I think it's because of like the oil that they're used to to create them with. Another reason I think a lot of people don't like the the polyethylene, the ones that I like, um, it's because they're a tad foggy, um, which which is fine by me. It's I'm not presenting these, so I don't care. But there, it's it's a softer, it's like a softer plastic almost that I that I just like. They they last much much longer. Um, a lot of people are doing mylar because they want to present them. I have a few mylars, but the mylars don't fit in the box 
the way the other ones do. So I just uh, I just stick with this. Um, I have a few Mylars that I'll, I'll put some of my favorites in, but uh, I you know, honestly like this is the way to go for me. So I stick with that. Okay, so now I'm going to move into Marvel Comics. Um, I'm always focused on buying some of the Marvel comics that are not really focused on. And more recently, um, over the I would say over the last year, I started focusing on Iron Man um, because no one gives a shit about Iron Man right now. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll buy Iron Man. I had Iron Man 1. Um, and I have some of the early books, but I didn't have a lot from the the, the the first 10 or 12. So I thought I'd focus on that. I You know what? I used to have two as a kid, but I had one that was just beaten to hell. And I felt like, oh, it's not really worth anything. And I sold it at one point with a bunch of other stuff and got rid of it. And I was kind of kicking myself. But at the same time, too, I'm like, I can find this book. It's, not, it's nothing that's going to break the bank. So... Um, I bid on this on Heritage, I think. Oh, and by the way, Heritage doesn't have as many of the raw books. They have a lot more of the um, uh, the, the slabbed books. But I, I love the raw books. You can slab them. I'm, I'm probably going to maybe get into that a little bit. But, uh, you know, I like, you know, I just, I romanticize about just the book itself. You know, how old it is. Some of these books are, you know, so much older than me. Um, I love the way they smell. I I love the art not being up to par compared to what you look at now. And you look at it, and it's especially when you like watch an old film, you just kind of look at it from the point of pr- the perspective of that time. And I really just love like immersing myself in that time period when I'm going through these books. And you can't do that with a slab. So like I really I I love owning the book itself. Um, I also read it. I read every one of these too that, that I, I come across. Um, oh, by the way, if, if you're too afraid to read a book because it's just so old or maybe it's, you know, maybe it's brittle or whatnot. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm like, I don't want to handle a book too much. I'll go to what's uh, the website called readfullcomics.com. Um, I'm not sure if that's the exact thing. I'll put it, I'll put it down in, in the, in the list below. It's just so you see it. But, uh, I'll go there and read the comic there, um, especially with a slab. Like if I've bought a slab, I'll, I'll have to do that, of course. Um, but most of the books, what I'll do, um, too much information is co- about to come up. Um, I have a little drawer next to the toilet in the bathroom. So I'll go like if I bought a bunch of books, I'll put them in that drawer. And then I'll, you know, you only read about five or six pages before your lower extremities become completely numb. But I'll sit and read some of those and I'll get through so many of the books um, just doing that. Uh, I rarely will sit, you know, and, and read them when I get them in. I, I, I kind of just chip away at them. Um, and then when I get a little low on books, I'm like, oh, I got to buy some more books. Or, you know, I have enough where I'm like, I got to pull out some older books and read those. But anyway, I got this one on Heritage. And then I recently on a, uh, this was Infinity Comics. Uh, I think they're an East Coast company. That I bought... A whole bunch they had they had listed and they were all pretty good condition uh, i i didn't they they had like two through i think 30 uh and and i bid on on you know whichever ones i could get where they weren't i, I wasn't bidding more than you know say 60 percent of what the actual fair market value was so i got three i got four didn't get five. Somebody beat me on five. Somebody beat me on six. But I got seven and I got eight. And then I had like a big chunk after that. But they had, this was the one where I bid a bit higher. Uh, not a lot of people bid on on what it was worth. So I got it for probably 60 to 70% of what it's worth. Iron Man 25, which was a great fight between him and Namor. Um, and then I got 28, which was the first appearance of his father. Uh, and this, I got these two. This was, uh, where did I? Oh, I bought I bought Iron Man 149 at a show. I got it in decent condition. It's got a couple of ticks on it, maybe three. But um, and then I ended up bidding on Hip Comics for 150, and I got a pretty good deal on it. It was it was well less than 100 bucks. And that book, 
it was it was sought after for a little while and then it kind of died down because nobody's this interested in, in uh, Iron Man. Um, but people were buying up a lot of the the big appearances of Doctor Doom in other books. Luckily, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift to the Incredible Hulk now. The Incredible Hulk had a bunch of those too, where they had the um, Doctor Doom in them. Really great uh, covers, by the way. Hulk comics too. Um, Hulk is probably my second favorite superhero, and the the writing in the Hulk books is really underrated. Um, I just always connected with him. I mean, anybody that's loved like old Frankenstein movies and and uh, stuff like that, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, he's just this character kind of uh, ridiculed by society and misunderstood. And he's got a good heart. Uh, so there was there's a lot to work with. Um, you know, going from place to place and 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 being just completely hunted down by the army over and over again. I just really relate to him. So it's my my spiel on the Hulk. Um, the Herb Tremblay, I think, is the uh, Trempe is the the artist. Uh, good, he's a good artist. You know, he, he he's probably the most iconic to ever draw the Hulk. So um, there's a there's a little bit of uh, nostalgia when when I get those. So anyway, um, I got that one and I got the other one and I got both of these in a really high grade. Uh, and then I bought on ebay somebody had posted a whole bunch i'm not including all of them i'm just including kind of the important ones the one that has kang on it 135 um and then 140 which i believe is the first appearance of jarella jarella was always an interesting character for me in the in the hulk books because he didn't really have hulk didn't have a love interest bruce banner did but hulk didn't and this was his first chance to embrace that and, you know, it's taken away from him at some point, but uh, he, he re, you know, there's nothing like seeing any character from all walks of life. They all need to have their love story. And this one really kind of, you know, tugs on the nerve a little bit. So this is Jarella's first appearance. I hope she shows up in the MCU at some point. Um, I also got 182. I got this one on Heritage. And I got it cheap because I just I don't think there was any interest in it at the time. So I have I bought 180 and I have it in like really high condition. I bought 180 back whew, 20 some years ago. I think I paid 80 bucks for it. It's now worth like probably two grand. Um, I don't have 181. So that's one of the ones that it is on my grail list. Uh, I'm not aggressively pursuing it, but if if it falls on my lap somehow at a reasonable price. I might have to pull the trigger if uh, you know if I have money in the bank at the time. So um, and this one, uh, by the way, this book sucks. By the way, you know, I it's got it's got Wolverine in the first page or two, and then the rest of it. These two characters, the first appearance of uh, um, Anvil and Hammer, they're stupid. This is this is this is an over great. Uh, excuse me overpriced book for what it's worth i got it at an okay rate it's kind of considered the trilogy of like you've got hulk 180 181 and 182 that all include wolverine two of them are cameos and then one's the big full appearance in the middle that's the one the big one that's worth the money so i felt like i had to have it but i read it and i'm like this book sucks i'm not impressed at all so so that's my hulks um for now and then let's dig into the Avengers. Oh, I only got one Avenger. I, you know, I bought a lot of Avengers as a kid. So I had most of these. Um, this was a Kang book. I found it. It's in okay condition. I'd call it probably like a 7.0, 7.5 maybe. The, um, I bought it at a show and I just kind of looked at it and I'm like, in the light there, it, it, you know, it, it had had some nicks in the corner and I tried to talk the guy down and he's like, yeah, right. He was one of those guys that was less flexible, but always try, always try. There's no harm in asking. So do it. Um, but yeah, I got a hold of that book. Um, this is one I probably paid closer to full price. It was before everyone was seeking this book out. Um, so I, I think I got it. It's it, it shot up in value, but it, it's actually like the closer I look at it, the closer I realize like it's 
it's off-white kind of cream but because of the black these things get beat up and this one doesn't really have too many ticks i mean this is i would say at least a maybe an eight um i i maybe should think about grading it um just because it's uh it's probably a pretty valuable book so um this is one I got on an auction, got it a little cheap. Uh, I bought this before this book blow up, blew up, so um, pretty good stuff. Steranko, gotta love Steranko. And I also got the 181. I bought this one more recently. There's probably like about a year and a half difference in, in when I bought those two. Um, this one probably needs a cleaning, but if you look at it, it's in spectacular condition. It's extremely tight. So. Maybe if I clean this, it'll be worth something. I don't know if I, I would slab it, though. Um, the next book was one that was one of my grails. I really had a hard time finding it in, in maybe like 6.0 plus condition. This one could be considered a much higher grade, um, but it's got a little nick in the corner. You'll notice right there missing. I don't know how much that brings it down. I don't I, um, you can always comment in the notes if you think that brings it down to a five or if it can't go any higher than a six or whatnot. But other than that, it's in pretty good condition. But this time period, all those books are a little bit brittle. So um, just because of the paper that they were using at the time. But I don't know why this book isn't more of a big deal because it's really the first battle between um, Iron Man and Captain America. That where they go toe to toe, and it's also the second appearance of Craven the Hunter. So, um, and I think Chameleon's third or fourth appearance. So it's a really great book. Uh, the, the Tales of Suspense have a whole bunch of little keys in there, and and this I believe is an underrated one. Don't know why, but I wanted it. So I, I you know, I I think it took me two years to find the the one that I wanted um, at the price that works. Um, I also was seeking out the first appearance of the leader for a while. I bought this one at a comic book store in Texas and was reasonably priced. It was a 6.0, but, but presents very well. Uh, and this one is actually considered the first appearance. You, you know what's funny is I read this and I was like, I don't see him in there. And you have to really dig deep. Uh, the leader is not even mentioned by name, but they have like the silhouette of him shows up in a whole page. So technically this is the first appearance, but the first full real appearance is this one. And I got that one on a hip auction and I don't know why nobody, nobody bid on it. This was long before the, the She-Hulk series was announced and, and there was the, this FOMO that he might be in it. So I don't think anybody was seeking the leader. The leader is such an underrated Hulk villain that I don't, I can't wait for them to use him. He's not like, it's difficult to screw him up because there's really, he's a, he's a very specific character. Um, they could, uh, you know, <laughs> don't get me wrong. They probably will, but uh, it's, he, he's a cool character. And it's funny because like the dynamic between the Hulk and the leader, the Hulk is the utmost brawn of a character versus the utmost brilliance of a character so it's brawn versus brain in it's it's a bit cliche but they uh they're a little uh subtle about the the dynamic of those two spectrums um for that those two characters so i always you know he's my favorite leader i mean the leader is my favorite hulk villain so um I, and i also picked this one up uh off hip which was quality comics. Um, and now I'm going to touch on a few more. Thor. God. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, now I want to touch on Thor. So I picked up, I, you know, I'm not a huge Thor, Thor fan, but he's got some characters in it. Um, I haven't mentioned this yet, but my, my favorite character is Silver Surfer. So, Anything that has some of his ancillary characters in it, I always seek out. So I love Galactus. I love the Super Skrull. I love, you know, anytime the Skrulls show up. Uh, and Thanos, of course. So this, I felt, was one of those great covers. Not a key or anything, but I found it in really high condition. I can't remember where I got this one. I do remember, though, I paid probably a third of fair market value. So I was like, I gotta buy it. So there you go. 
Um, and then I got, uh, I bought this one at Reese's Comics because I was buying that Conan book that I mentioned. And I just, just looked through some other books and I was like, hey, you know, if I, if I offer you this, will you, will you sell this and throw it in the lot? And he was like, totally. Uh, they were really good. You know, I, you know, I spent a fair amount there, but uh, um, they got, they had so many decent books that, you know, just throw out a price and, and they'll take it. So um, I also got two of the Galactuses. I bought these on from, Inf I think, Infinity uh, Comics um, on a hip auction. And they had 60. So I got 161, 162. Uh, 160 is the one that kind of starts it off. I think that's the one that's probably the highest value. Um, so I'm still looking for that. But uh, these are were a little beat up, but they're part of that Galactus series. And then there's two more that come on come up a little later. So I'm, I'm still looking for those ones. Um, and then I also bought, I bought this on eBay. This was probably almost three years ago, but I bought the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. And... Uh, I bought it from a guy that posted a picture that was just immaculate. And then when I got it in the mail, the thing was trashed. So I got, I was pretty pissed. And I emailed the guy. I'm like, I'm sending this back. And he called, it was funny. He called me a liar on, uh, it, you know, in the, in the notes back and forth. And I'm like, really? I'm like, I have the book. Here's a picture of the book you sent me. And here's the picture you posted. How am I a liar? Like, what, what, where, where, what are you trying to pull? So I sent it back. eBay is really good about protecting the buyers. So they gave me my money back. And then literally I found the exact same book. And this book, I'm going 9.6. This book is immaculate. And I paid less than what that other guy robbed me for. And I probably paid maybe 45, 50 bucks for a book that in this type of condition was, you know, closer to 80. So I was really happy and I was so glad I didn't, I didn't, you know, just settle with the book that I got. Cause I, I really, you know, some of these, any, anything from the eighties, you really shouldn't be settling for, you know, a lower grade. Um, and then I also got this on a hip auction, uh, not too long ago. Um, I'm missing 141, but 142, there you have it. Uh, I saved these ones for last because I wanted to kind of expose my my arc and my, my first slab that I purchased. So um, my first slab, of course, was an Amazing Spider-Man. We'll get into that at the, at the end. But I bid on uh, Amazing Spider-Man 23. I love anything Green Goblin. I think he is one of the cool. He's my second favorite villain of all times. Um, in front of Galactus, by the way, too. Um, Ra's al Ghul's my, my favorite villain. I really just think he's amazing. He, he's he's the one of one of the rare villains that that transcends god godliness with um, reality. So, um, and then the Green Goblin is he's similar too. But uh, oh, and and by the way, let's just dispel the whole who has the best rogue gallery argument. I know the argument usually comes down to like Batman. He's got the best villains or Spider-Man does. And the answer is Spider-Man. And it's it's not even that close. I mean, yeah, Batman has really great. And if you take the top Batman villains and the top Spider-Man villains, and you match them up. It's pretty close. They, you know, they've got they've got villains you can relate to in both and both both have an effect on the character. So like Ra's al Ghul, the Joker killed, you know, Jason Todd and stuff that has a massive effect on Batman himself and then Spider-Man just as well like the Green Goblin his son is his best friend and and the Green Goblin kills his girlfriend and like they all are huge impacts on the character but once you get past that you get down to the B characters and Spider-Man's are still cool and Batman's I think start to take a dive a little bit um so there's there's just more really great Spider-Man villains. Oh, and by the way, there's some there's some lousy ones too. But uh, I think that overall volume-wise, the better characters are, um, the better villains, I should say, are in the Spider-Man Rogue Gallery. Um, but Batman takes a, a, a close second to that. And um, some of the underrated ones too, I think Flash. Flash has some really great villains. You know who has some lame villains is Superman. I always felt Superman, he's got like a top three or four that I love that aren't even like his main ones um, so much. 
in the comics. But other than that, like some of his, are, oh, by the way, um, Mitzio Plick is my favorite Superman villain. And he's, he's kind of ridiculous, by the way. I mean, he's not, he's just one of those ones that's kind of like a guilty pleasure for me. I, I, I love, but I've always thought that, you know, especially when you touch into kind of the Superman, uh, Superboy books, um, his showing up here and there, it really adds a whole new element. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what James Gunn is going to do with Superman because there's now that they've kind of talked about like the multiverse and all this, some of the really great Superboy villains could show up and they could touch on like different time periods, um, different dimensions. And that's when Mincio Plick comes in where he's he's uh, he's from a different dimension. Superboy jumps back and forth where the Legion of Superheroes from was it the the the, the, the fifth century? Um, uh, Whatever, whatever century it is, um, the, the, the 50th century or the 30th century, I forgot what it is. Um, but those characters going back and forth and they kind of go back in time and help Superboy. They're like, hey, this is going to be a problem in the future. Do something about this. I kind of love that, but it's it's uh, it's a little um, dorky, some of it. So, um, you know, we'll see. I, I'd love to see it. Anyway, I got way off track here. So anyway, um, Amazing Spider-Man. I got this one. Uh, no one bid on bid on this as high as I wanted. I think I paid close to fair market value on this. Um, but Amazing Spider-Man books are probably the most stable books you can get. I also got 122, which was the uh, death of the Green Goblin. I, I'll buy anything with the Green Goblin in it. I'll buy anything with Lizard. I'll buy anything with Craven. Craven's probably my second favorite. Um, then Lizard. Um, and then Punisher. Um, so I don't have the first appearance of the Punisher yet, but I have what's considered the second full appearance. I got such a deal on this book. I bought this on hip in an auction and no one was, was putting in you know, bigger dollars for whatever reason. I mean, the book, I, I don't remember what this is worth, but I know I paid like 40 bucks for what is probably an eight or eight five. Let's see, let, me, let me make sure. Yeah, this is at least an eight. Um, nice, nice looking book. I paid way less than what it's worth. So, um, and then I also got, uh, I got this at a show, one sixty two, which you know that little combination of uh, him. Oh, I kind of got this out of order here. Um, him, Nightcrawler, and, and Punisher. And this is when Punisher starts to kind of like be on this sort of the same side as Spider Man. He's no longer a villain so much. Um, but 161 and then I got this one doesn't I don't think this one has the Punisher in it but it's got a Jigsaw fighting him and it's the first full appearance of Jigsaw I believe um, it might have shown up before that but anyway um, yeah so that, those are my amazing Spider-Mans and now take a pause ow Those were my Spider-Mans, but uh, the last thing, this was my first slab that I ever purchased. Now, and before I kind of expose that, I just want to talk real quickly about, you know, buying slabs. I rejected it forever. I really did. I didn't want to get a slab. I want to, I want to own the book. I want to have the book in front of me. I want to kind of romanticize about it and look through it. And, and I really don't want to stock um, because I'm probably most of the books I buy now, I don't plan on selling unless I find like a you know a, a bulk group and then there's some in there that I either have duplicates of I can sell or I just don't care and it, it has a value. But other than that, I don't really want it. Um, I get it now though. So I bought I bought my first slab, and the the, the only reason I bought it is because it was the only way I could find make sure that it was of a, a certain condition. Its value was intact um, and it presents really well. So I bought myself um, Amazing Spider-Man 121. And this is, of course, the death of Gwen Stacy. It's got the, the, the wonderful John Romita cover. And I got it. Once I got it in the mail... I fell in love with this and I was like, this is so cool in the slab. I actually had it kind of sitting up on my desk for a little while. I don't like to present them for too long, but, but, uh, 
I, w- I was enjoying that that purchase. And um, in a couple of my future videos that I'm going to show you, I bought a couple more slabs. Um, I'm finding that sometimes it's impossible to get some of those books that I really, really want. Um, not slab because when you get into the the silver age or you know even bronze there's um, there's a lot of people that are sending these off to be slabs so the ones that are in the the decent condition you're not going to find someone selling them because they're usually dealers that are selling these too Um, and when they get when they get like they buy a lot they're going to take the good ones and send them off get them cgc so i really don't have a choice i've got i was kind of forced but I do. I like them a little bit. I don't want to have all slabs, but I, I'm I'm in. Okay, I I finally uh, I finally succumb to the slabs, um, and I do like them. And and I'll say this too. Um, that grail, the flash grail that I got, I'm thinking about sending that one in. And I'm I'm kind of like a completist, not in the sense that I don't need all the fillers, but I like the the ones that go together, and. I, I wouldn't mind sending this one off because it goes with it. I also have the one right before that, which it, well, one right before that, which is the one with the Hulk in it. Um, it's in really high condition. I could send that and have that. And I'll tell you this: when I eventually buy the first appearance of the Punisher, it's gonna be in a slab. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> like if I find that not in a slab, it'll be amazing. But a pro- it's probably going to be a slab, so that'll go right with it, and it'll make a nice little package with all of those together. So, um, yeah, why not? I'm in. Anyway, that's my video. Um, that's a little bit of my philosophy on purchasing comics. If you uh, found this interesting, please click like and subscribe. You'll, uh, you'll get keyed into future videos just like this one. Um, so, I uh, hope to see you again. Thanks.